Bam, there you have it. Now you got live futures data streaming right into your computer to the second. That was easy, right? Finance family, it's the other brother, Adam Gibbags. And today we're gonna to be live streaming futures price data from the TD Ameritrade API. It's gonna be in three easy steps. First, we're gonna create a client, authenticate to connect to the API. Second, we're gonna choose which contract we wanna pull data from. And then lastly, we're gonna start pulling that data down and doing whatever we need to do. So first up, get that trusty Google open and then Google TD API docs. And then up top here, we have our read the docs and let's just jump straight in there. And then we're gonna be using the streaming client today. So let's just click the streaming client and then we have some of the code that we can basically just copy this and then paste it right into your Python environment. But we'll jump over there in a second. Next we want to google cme futures symbols and then we'll scroll down a little bit and then we want to look at the cme group product slate here this is going to have a ton of different futures products on the cme SIBO, nymex and then you can click in to any of the products to get the detailed contract specifications so you can basically see the shorthand symbol here under the globex column for this let's just click into the s p you have your contract specs but let's click over to quotes and then here in the leftmost column we're going to have have our contract name now when you open thinkorswim you can search this here but the name's slightly different but we're going to use this as a basis for determining the contract name on the TD Ameritrade platform so also open up your thinkorswim so that you can search the contract name when we get to that so go ahead and pop open your Python environment if you've seen the previous live streaming videos I'll link one right here then you're kind of familiar with what everything's going on here but we'll break it down and then also if you're not familiar with connecting to the API in this block here. I'll link to the first video where I get stock data and show you how to set up those credentials and all that. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and import our modules. We got a couple of TDA modules here that come straight out of the documentation. And then what I do here is I'm importing my API key, my redirect URI, my token path from this file TDA secrets here. And you can just input those manually here into your client. And then this block here it imports this nest AC Sync Yo module and then it applies it here so that you can use the module inside of an IPython environment, Jupyter, Spider, etc. Okay, next we have our authentication for our stream client, which comes directly from the documentation. So if you flip over to the documentation, you can see that right here we just copy and pasted these two blocks, and then that's what's in there. So you have your API key, you have your URI, and then you have the location of your token, as well as the account ID on your TD Ameritrade account. So if you flip back over you can see here we create the client we feed the credentials in basically and then we feed this client into a streaming client and then we also give our account ID so next what I do here is I create a queue class and this is gonna allow us to just store a certain amount of data that comes in and then kind of get rid of the rest so we're not just storing a ton of data as we start streaming these quotes in so basically this queue is like a fixed length data structure where new data comes in and old data goes through the queue and then once once the queue reaches a certain length and it gets rid of the oldest data so essentially you can just set the queue length to however long you'd like it to be or you could just not use the queue at all for your purposes okay and then next here I instantiate the queue so we have an object to use in our handler so this next function is a reach stream function and it's taken directly from the documentation you can see it right here we're basically just copying this block here and moving it over and we're making some changes to the middle and then we're also changing what occurs in our handler so you see first here we're just logging in and then next we set our quality of service which is how delayed the data is so the next block we have here is our print message function but not only does it print the message it actually adds the message into the queue and the reason for the queue is we kind of want to inspect the data after we cut off the stream so if you've seen the other live streaming videos this part of the code is going to look a bit different what we're doing here is we're adding a handler that we've specified specified above our print message function. So when the messages come in from the API, we're going to pass them into our print message function. And then next, what this line of code here does is it actually subscribes to the specific futures contract. And so this is where we'll take a break and we'll check out which contract we wanna get and how to find out what the name is on the TD Ameritrade API. So if you pop back over to the CME product slate, you can pick the futures product that you want and then go over to quotes here and then you'll be able to see 
the shorthand contract name, but this is specific to CME. So then you want to take this first part of the contract name and begin to search that in the TD platform to figure out what the contract name is. So if you go over to your TD Ameritrade, I have pulled up charts here and then I'm about to type in a name to pull up a chart. So I'll type in slash ESU and it actually brings me a couple of different contract names. So these are all September contracts and then this is the year of expiration. So if you flip back to the product specifications on CME, you also see ESZ and ESH. So then if you come back over to TD Ameritrade and you type in ESH, then it's also going to pull up some contracts. And then if you type in ESZ, it's also going to pull up some other contracts. So the letter after the contract name, basically ES, that's going to be the expiration month. And then you have the year after. So essentially, these are the names that you want to use when you subscribe to data streams from the TD API. So we saw ESU 22 there, and I'm just going to pop that into our subscription function and also into our unsubscribe function so we could just unsubscribe there. All right, then here at the bottom, we just have a run function. And then also what I've created here is just a function to close the stream off. Now it doesn't log you out from your API connection. So you'll probably just time out if you aren't sending any messages to the API, but um, you can shut off that stream and we will let it run, baby. Bam, there you go. We've got live futures price quotes streaming directly into our computer. I mean, three steps, that was pretty simple. And as you can see, you know, this is aftermarket. So these quotes are coming in pretty slow. We can go ahead and control C to shut that off and then that'll interrupt, but we can see that quotes are still coming through. So we'll just run our close stream function here. Bang, bang. All right, that cuts everything off. And then we can go ahead and see what's going on inside of our queue. All right, fam, there you have it. Being that it is the post market, there's not that much liquidity coming through this contract, but you can see here that we do have a bid price and an ask price. Bam, there you have it. Now you got live futures data streaming right into your computer to the second. That was easy, right? Fam, please be careful. Use this knowledge for good. Don't go losing your retirement. Watch out for those red candles. You have my blessings. Oh, like the video, subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments section. You have my blessing, fam. Let's go get these bags.